All right, so good evening, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to welcome you all tonight um, for uh, a fifth meeting of the Virginia Pumpkin Growers uh, educational sessions. Um, tonight, we're going to be discussing um, weed control with uh, Dr. Alan Straw. He will be here with us. And um, a little bit of just some housekeeping stuff. You should have access to the chat feature as we go. I'm sure Alan wouldn't mind if you typed your um, questions in there and then we can answer them as we at the end after we go through the presentation. Um, tonight's gonna be a little bit different than um, some of the past nights because we're trying to collect a little bit of information from you all. So I have a short, very short poll just to gauge um, Alan was kind of wanting to know some of uh, your concerns as far as weeds in your pumpkins. And so this poll, I'm gonna start it in just a second, is just click through and select the answers that apply to you. And then that way we can um, kind of get a little bit of our talking points for the uh, presentation kind of from the feedback that you all provide. So I'm going to launch that. I'm gonna get that going, I'm still letting a couple of people in. So, and Alan, if there's anything you'd like to say in regards to the poll, um, you can. Well, one of the things that Ashley and I talked about yesterday is, and, and I know a lot of people aren't as comfortable doing things online or through Zoom. So there, we were talking about that there hadn't been as many questions and I had actually done a Zoom meeting for a extension office in North Carolina on Tuesday. So I had suggested that we do a poll on the front end to get some ideas what you all are looking at in terms of, you know, one, what kind of herbicide you're using, two, what kind of weed problems you're having, and <clears throat> that sort of thing to kind of get an idea so we could discuss it at the end. So that was our goal by putting together a little poll. So are you got that ready? It's ready. I'll go ahead and launch that, and then I will just give you guys a few minutes to select it. So it should be popping up on your screen. And so just, um, you should have the opportunity to hit multiple options too. On questions two and three, you can select multiple answers. So. so I don't get to answer. <laughs> Is it showing on your screen? You can answer. It's too. showing the tally on my screen. Okay, so. One thing Zoom wouldn't let me do is uh, let you all type in responses. So it would only let me do, uh, or you could select. So if there's anything on there that's mentioned in the other category that you couldn't list out, um, you could put it in the chat or you could just ask it about it if, if it's not something that we cover in the presentation. Looks like about half the people voted so far. Yeah, I'll give it a little, a little longer. <clears throat> There's a couple additions in the chat, Alan, just so you know to look there. Um, yeah, I saw that over there about nightshade. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. it only gave me uh, 10 options as well. Okay. So. Night, shade, and morning glory. Those are two that we'd expect. So. Okay. All right, there's still a few more trickling in, so I'll give it just another minute. And then you can tell me if you want me to stop it early. It doesn't matter to me. Well, it's okay. We've got <clears throat> the last ones that's logged on. You know, maybe they get voted here and then we can get started. Okay. Looks like it's unanimous on whether we use herbicides or not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we can reveal this poll to everybody at the end, right? Should it should, yes. Okay, why don't you go ahead? It's been another minute and we've got 12 out of 17 and you and I can't vote. So that means there's only been three other people. That <laughs> yeah, that'll work. All right, let's see what happens. If I hit share results, hopefully it pops up for you all. Yeah. Okay. Looks like about everybody that, that responded is using herbicides. It looks like over half of you are using command about half using Sandia, about two thirds using Reflex. Um, nobody's using Curvit. Post and select, just a couple of each. Strategy, pretty low. Dual is by far the main product that people are using, three fourths of you are using it. And then Gramoxone, um, about a third, and nobody's using Prefar. And the unanimous weed winner was pigweed. Three fourths of you say that's a troublesome weed. Uh, Jimson weed, which we expected, sometimes thistles, cockle burr, ground cherry. And honestly, you mentioned nightshades in there. Nightshade is a ground cherry, is another. Ground cherry is a type of nightshade. Uh, basically, the two nightshades we deal with most commonly, or three, are ground cherry, uh, eastern black nightshade, and then, of course, the bull nettle or horse nettle. It's a perennial nightshade. Uh, grasses are, don't seem to be a big problem for most people. Nettles, again, they're a perennial nightshade. They can be really serious. And then, of course, nut sedge. And I'm assuming other, other than we're getting, people were thinking about nightshades and lambs, um, well, it wasn't lamb, what was it? Oh, morning glory. That was the other one that was mentioned in the chat. So those would be our main weeds. So we'll talk about that as we go through. And again, I think we'll spend a little bit more time during the discussion. That's all right with you. Sounds good. And um, you should be ready to go whenever you are ready to get started. Okay. So I'm going to um, start to share. If you have questions, and just go to the chat box. If you don't feel comfortable, you know, you can ask questions at the end. But if you want to go ahead and type in your question as we go. That'll be good. That way I can, you know, we'll have the questions and Ashley can help me keep up with them. And hopefully at the end, then we'll be ready to go. Everybody see that okay? We get it up on the slideshow. All right. So most of you have seen this, but I, I, I may do a little bit of other things here in a few minutes, but I want to talk about our weed control strategy. Most of you all know this, but obviously we have herbicides and all of you are using them. And basically we rely on our pre-plant or pre-emergent herbicides for control of our annual grasses and our small seeded broadleaf weeds. If you all are using command and dual reflex, can't command dual sandia, you should be taking care of most of your grasses. Now I'm not saying you still won't see some late season grass or if you have Johnson grass, you may have to do something else. But as far as annual grasses, you shouldn't be having much problem because both dual and command are very strong on grass. I noticed there was a couple of people that said they were using post and two more said they were using select. That will clean up whatever you have. 
usually. Um, small seeded broad leaves, typically, again, we're going to take care of that with these pre-emergence herbicides. Obviously, the problem starts to run into if we have really large seeded broad leaves. And by that, I'm thinking jimson weed's a big one, cuckleburr's a big one. They have large seed. Uh, a lot of times our herbicides don't give us season long control of those. So um, using a post-emergence application can help with that. The problem is there's not much we can use. So we'll discuss that as we go along. And then of course, we can also pick up our escapes with our post-emergence. And there we'll be pick up our grasses with the poster select or generic equivalents thereof, or using a, a, a broad, you know, broadleaf herbicide. Obviously cultivation helps, but if we're doing no-till or strip-till, most of the time we're not going to cultivate and we don't want to cultivate. So um, if we, you know, that's not an option for a lot of us. Obviously, if we no-till, we keep that residue, that mulch out there for weed suppression. <clears throat> and through the years we've seen, the heavier you can keep that residue a lot of times, the better you your weed suppression is. Unfortunately, the heavier your residue is, the less that the herbicide is able to flow down through that residue and get to the soil surface. So sometimes when you have really heavy mulch layers, your herbicide may not work as well. But weed suppression is a is a potential with our um, with our um, mulches. So typically in pumpkins, we use a pre-plant burn down. Um, some of us will actually do a pre-plant burn down ahead of time, uh, maybe a month, six weeks ahead of time, depending on how tall our um, cover crops getting. Uh, we do have products like AIM. AIM is only labeled for transplanted only because it does have a little bit of soil activity. Uh, ET, which is another product similar to AIM, um, again, is a burn down. Both of these products are strictly broadleaf weeds. You're not going to see much grass activity out of either one. Glyphosate or Roundup, we use often. Um, a lot of times people will use it on the first burn down. Others will use it at the second you know, at planting. Uh, sometimes I like to use glyphosate early to kill the cover crop. And then if there's any weeds that I miss, I use Firestorm or Parazone or some sort of Gramoxone or Paraquat to clean that up. But these are our products we can use for burn down that are labeled, um, relatively safe. There's work right now doing with glufosinate, which is Liberty or Rely, um, also known as Ignite, um, being done in cucurbits, it's fairly safe. Um, but we haven't seen the labels come out on that yet. Um, but I'm thinking there, if you have things like Palmer amaranth or um, um, other Roundup resistant weeds, um, I think that's the product that they're using most common for that. Pre-emergence, the things that are labeled as we've talked about through the years, Kerbit, um, I see that not a lot of people are using Kerbit anymore about Three-fourths of you are using dual, dual magnum or some generic equivalent. Again, it's labeled at one to one and a third pints per acre, but not over the row, although it's been used over the row for the last 20 years. <laughs> uh, Prefar is still labeled, but again, nobody's using it. It's expensive and it doesn't provide that good of weed control. Reflex is labeled now. And in Virginia, we have a rate of eight to 24 fluid ounces per acre pre-emergence. In North Carolina, it's eight to 12 or eight to 10 fluid ounces per acre. Uh, strat, uh, sandia, uh, half to two thirds of an ounce per acre pre. And then strategy is two to six pints per acre pre. Uh, strategy is a, a um, uh, pre-mix of command and curb it. So it is a way that we can get by without some of those label restrictions on command, but on the other hand, that use rate's a little low. Typically, we need to be up at around eight pints to get the amount of active ingredient we want out of command and curb it. Of course, post-emergence, we can use um, halosulfuron, sandia, profine, or the two that are labeled, somewhere in that half to three quarters of an ounce. Um, I reiterate this every year, and every time I talk to growers, I usually find the best activity at around two thirds of an ounce. But I also recommend that it's done between the three and five true leaf stage. So if you, that's about 21 to 28 days after planting. When you start getting up there to seven, eight, nine leaves, especially when you're starting to get buds, you are going to get some damage. 
um, not necessarily killing the plant, but you'll see some stunning and you can actually see some yield losses. So that really needs to go out in that three to five leaf stage. And then of course we have our grass herbicides, things like post, select, a select max and the generic equivalents. All are pretty effective. Again, it kind of depends on which grass you're going after. I typically lean towards select or select max because it has a little bit better, broader spectrum grass control than post. Post is a little stronger on annual grasses. Uh, select seems to be as good on, on annual grasses and perennial grasses. And then of course, directed in the middles, um, we have labeled AIM, uh, up to two ounces an acre, glyphosate, halosulfuron methyl, and the treflan at one to one and a half pints. Keep in mind that when you do treflan, it's got to be weed free because you don't get any post-emergence activity out of that. This would be done like if you had cultivated or whatever and had clean soil, you put that on in the middles and then either right before rain or a light cultivation to incorporate it. Since most of us are doing no-till, that's not much of an option for us. As we've talked about many, many times, there's really no strong standalone products. We're gonna to have to use all the strategies at our disposal, uh, limit, limited post options, Again, we find that two and three and maybe even four-way combinations are best. And really, I ask this question a lot of times when people call and say, what should I use or what should I spray with? What weeds are you trying to control? You know, if I have um, uh, cucklebur, then I may lean towards using um, things like dual command sandia or dual command and reflex. <clears throat> if I know I have nut sedge, then I may even lean towards that sandia combination. Um, but if I know I'm going after morning glories or something like that, I may say I'm going to lean towards dual command and reflex. So um, we, we, which weed you have is important on what we choose. And as we know that <clears throat> there, um, reflex does have a label. It's a 24C state by state. You notice the difference while ago in the rate, we got a higher rate in Virginia than neighboring states do. And so you have to go to the pharmacist website to print that label out in, in order to legally use Reflex. <clears throat> and we've talked about a lot of different data through the years. Um, this was back in 2013. We did work with Apollo in Montgomery County. Um, we didn't get a lot of differences but essentially 100% weed control. Um, in Chowan County that year out in Eastern North Carolina, we did a no-till and we did different varieties. We did a rep with Apollo, one with Cronus, one with Field Trip, and one with Magic Wand. And here are our treatments that we used. We used the dual and dual plus reflex, dual plus reflex, and a high of two pints, pint and a half was treatment three, and then five was using dual and reflex at three pints. Then six, we went to, and seven were our three-way combinations, a pint of command, a pint of reflex, and a pint and a half, I mean, a pint of dual, pint of command, and a pint and a half of reflex. Treatment seven, pint of dual, pint of command, and a, two pints of reflex. And then eight was using command and dual with Sandia, and nine was our um, command and curve it, which was basically your strategy. And y'all have seen most of this data. Um, basically, this is looking at plant stand, number of plants per acre. Um, we did see a little bit of reduction in plant stand with some of these three-way combinations. A um, little bit of difference in yield. Uh, looked like treatment five, which was the, um, I believe that, um, pint, two pint rate seemed to cause us a little bit of yield loss. But the bottom line was um, that looked like that pint and a half to two pints of reflex appears to be relatively safe. At that three pint rate though, we did cause some yield reduction. So the three-way combination provided excellent weed control. One of the things that we have seen through the years and I continue to try to tell people about this is whenever we do reflex, we can see a stand reduction if you get a rain that occurs right as emergence, and especially as that plant starts to crook 
it seems like um, a splash and rain will give you just a little bit of damage and you will see some yield reduction in burning of the cotyledons or the, the stem right as it comes through the soil. So keep that in mind that if you do get a rain either right as the time they're coming up, you can see a little bit of injury. Also, when we start looking at the reflex, we have seen some standard, significant stand reductions using reflex. So in, in gourds, we definitely want to look at using command, dual, and sandia. It seems to be a much safer option. Um, depends on your soil type, but typically we're looking about that 21 fluid ounce of command, um, pint and a third of dual, and then about um, uh, two thirds of an ounce of sandia seems to give us a good combination there. Uh, also, we've seen a little bit of issue with the maximus. Um, Reflex, to me, what I see with reflex is a seed size response. When you take a variety that's very small seeded, um, sometimes you can see a problem with reflex inhibiting germination. The other thing that I warn you about though, when you start looking at the maximas, is that we, um, some varieties of maximas, that's our round stemmed things like big warty thing, or red warty thing, um, um, our porcelain dolls, pink girl, um, blue blue doll that sort of thing they have a um, they some of those varieties have a sensitivity to, sensitivity to curbit so I recommend you don't use curbit for sure when we're looking at some of those varieties. so again one of the things that I keep coming back with and we talk about quite often is what weeds do we have and basically on the left was kind of a variety that, I mean, a combination that started working really well for a lot of people. And that was to use that pint and a third of command, um, about a pint and um, a third of dual, and then one and a half to two pints of reflex. And where we were really focusing with this was on morning glory. Um, the reflex does give us some pre-emergence activity in morning glory. Is it a silver bullet? No. Is it gonna give you season long? Probably not, but we um, it does give us some pretty good options. Uh, that combination should also give you really good activity on nightshades, both ground cherry and uh, eastern black nightshade. It will nothing's going to give you control on um, bull nettle and horse nettle in season. The only thing that you will see a little bit of activity during the season is going to be a post-emergence application of sandia. And it's only going to kind of make it mad and burn it back a little bit, and then it's going to come back through it. Um, option B, command, pint and a third, dual pint and a third, and sandia at two thirds of an ounce. Uh, again, this is going to be something for gourds and, and the uh, maximas. But also where I see this as a really good combination is if I'm focusing on um, nut sedge activity. Sandia is going to give us better pre-emergence activity on nut sedge or early post-emergence activity on nut sedge. Reflex has a little bit, dual has a little bit of activity on nut sedge, but Sandia is by far the strongest. Now, both of these options should give you really good control of pigweed, although I would probably lean towards the reflex over the Sandia a little bit if I knew I had pigweed. Uh, lamb's quarter, um, both of these should take care of lamb's quarter pretty well. Command at, a, at 21 ounces should give you really good lamb's quarter activity. Um, so those most of the weeds that we that were on your list tonight, we should be taking care of with one of these two options. Um, last year we talked about an observation that we saw in 2018 and we've had more people going to this and that was where we saw a four-way combination seeming to, to, to work really well. In that case, we were using something like a pint of command, a pint to a pint and a third of dual, one and a half to two pints of reflex, and then uh, you know a half to two thirds of an ounce of sandia. Um, same thing on our heavier soils, we would maybe up those rates just a little bit. Um, and actually, I'd probably push that reflex up to two pints on that slide, on that side. But um, I've had a few people go to this combination and seems to do fairly well. Um, yeah, it's a little bit hot and you may see a little bit of vigor reduction on the front end, but you're gonna be clean. I'm not saying you won't have escapes, but you should be in pretty good shape. 
So we've been seeing a few people look at this and, and going forward with that. Um, so as you all know, we talked about this earlier that even with our best treatments, we're still gonna get some escapes and post-emergence products, um, you know, we have the Sandia for broadleaf weeds and pretty much post select and the generics for the grass. Um, we have been playing with Bassigran and had some pretty good activity, but I will warn you right now and be upfront, I doubt that you will ever see this product labeled in pumpkins or cucurbits. I know it's been being used some in watermelon. And like I said, we've been playing with it on and off since 2012 or 13 and have seen pretty good results with it in pumpkins. Um, this was our first trial where we looked at Bassigran at three rates and then with a sticker or with a crop oil. So um, one, one and a half, two pints per acre plus non-onyx surfactant and then the same rates with crop oil. And basically what we saw was that we saw less injury um, with the surfactant than with the crop oil. So at seven days after, after treatment, you can see just a little bit of, of more injury and it's not terrible injury. It's just a little bit of leaf burn, 10 to 20% in the um, surfactant and in the crop oil from, from about 15 to 30%. By 21 days after treatment, almost no injury was observed, no difference in yields. Appears to be very fine on jack-o'-lanterns, but we did find out you cannot use it on things like prize winner. It, it really slays the maximus. So I don't recommend that, um, you know, on round stem varieties, but in true jack-o'-lanterns, pies, it should work very well. But again, remember it's not labeled and don't know that it will be. So in 16, we did this trial again. We went with a pint and a half, two pints and three pints. And then we used two pints with select max. And then we used untreated, of course. We used a non-ionic surfactant with all the treatments. And we had four different varieties, Field Trip, Orty Goblin, Gladiator, and Kratos. And I put each variety in here differently. One thing I wanted to really point out to you is, is that you do this product by itself. Do not spray it with something else. You can see here, we had significantly more injury with the um, on field trip when we put it with the Select um, because Select has its own surfactant package in it. It's designed to be used with a surfactant because it already has some oils and so forth in there to make it go into the plant. So you actually get a little more injury. Warty Goblin the same way, a um, little bit more injury in Warty Goblin compared to field trip. Um, Gladiator, not quite as much as Warty Goblin, except in the Select. It really burnt the snot out of the 75% injury on them. And then Kratos, similar to the Warty, a um, little you know, more sensitive than Field Trip, but not, uh, not quite as sensitive on the, uh, as the um, Gladiator on the, with the Select. Bottom line here is, is that pint and a half to two pint rate seems to be relatively safe. We did see a little more injury at seven days. And as I've already pointed out, the addition of select max increased injury significantly. By 14 days, most injury was less. And by 21 days, only thing you really saw any injury in was that select where we tank mixed it with select max. What we were really trying to get with this um, treatment was cuckleburrs that come in late, velvet leaf that comes in late, and maybe a little bit of activity on some nut sedge. Um, because, you know, we don't have good lamb's quarter materials, nothing post-emergence, and even pre-emergence, we should be picking up lamb's quarter pretty well with command. But if we don't get good activation from timely rainfall, we may have some escapes. And um, again, velvet leaf, lamb's quarter, um, um, it would give you, I think, a little suppression, maybe a pigweed, but we shouldn't be having pigweed problems much with the herbicides we're using. So, you know, there was no differences in yield among treatments. Appears to be, you know, fine on the jack-o'-lanterns. Again, be careful with round stem things like prize winner and polar bear. So just some good things to, some options here. Again, I don't know that it'll ever be labeled, but um, it is out there and we've been trying to do some work. Um, as most of you know, EPA has added new restrictions for products containing Paraquat. That's Firestorm, Gramoxone, Parazone. Um, 
we were had this, all this thing in place in 2019, but because of that government shutdown, they said it'd be 2020. They were saying after 19 back app, pack applications would be gone. All these have not exactly transpired. However, there are some things that are definitely in effect now and we need to talk. They are still working on a closed system packaging design to prevent transfer or removal of the pesticide except directly into the proper application equipment. The, th th the theory here is that this will reduce, will re prevent spills, uh, mixed and pouring into other containers or other actions that could lead to exposure. One of the big exposure issues with Gramoxone or Paraquat has been people putting it in drink bottles and not labeling it or even putting it in drink bottles and kids think it's, it's a drink and they drink it. So that's been a serious issue. Um, there is now specialized training. You can go online and do that for certified applicators who use Paraquat. And this training emphasizes, you know, how, what precautions should be done to use, store, transfer, and keep it in proper containers. Um, there have been changes to the label and warning materials to highlight the toxicity and risks. One of the big things that hasn't been proven but has been um, advocated is that gramoxone paraquat may have a direct um, effect on people with um, Parkinson's disease and some other neurological things. So bottom line is, you know, there, there's new warnings about being careful with that. And now only certified applicators are allowed to to apply it used to be if you were a certified applicator and you had trained workers and handlers or handlers underneath you they could spray as of now you have to be licensed you either have to be not even a registered tech for commercial applicators you have to have either a private or commercial pesticide license to be able to apply it so those are some of the things that's happened that are in effect um, some of you may have already taken the training or may have taken it last year um, but um, if you haven't, you can go online and take the training and get ready for that. And that was all I had on pumpkins at this point. Um, are there any questions that anybody's had during the presentation? I think Josh had one about morning glories. I think it might have been in regards to Bassagram, but I'm not sure. Bassagram will give you suppression of small morning glories. And when I'm saying small, I'm talking probably like two to three leaves. Okay. Are there any others? That was the only one that had popped up while you were going. There's one. I'm trying to get to where I can see them. Okay, it says any experience with directed or shielded aim for morning glories? Yes, um, it is an excellent product. You know, ounce of, probably not even um, an ounce of aim with a surfactant or a crop oil should give you excellent control of morning glory, shielded or directed. Um, it's kind of like germoxone. It's going to burn what it touches. So you do need to do a good job keeping it off the pumpkin vine. But, you know, it, it's, um, it's very good. It's, you know, AIM is excellent on, on morning glory. Any other questions? Y'all can talk too if you want to. You don't have to use the <laughs> chat. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick on Bethany. She sent me pictures of somebody covered in cockleburrs a while ago. <laughs> Are y'all having cockleburr issues or was that just where y'all were doing something else? Uh, we're actually, we're just cleaning up a field that's had plastic in it for a couple of years that we 
<laughs> to and we hadn't gotten around to yet but uh i would say in general cockleburs is is maybe our number number one concern what are you using on herbicides uh we did the four-way last year um, and you still have cockleburr issues uh, well, no. So the field that I sent you the photo of, uh, <laughs> that was my sister covered in cockleburs. We did not use the four-way on that particular field, um, but we did on, on what we planted last year. And we actually yeah. did not have, we didn't really have the cockleburr problems that we do in that one particular field. Okay. All right. Um, another one of the things, and, and I'm um, I'll answer Donnie's question here in a minute. Um, one of the things that we have seen is, again, that the command should give you pretty good activity on cockleburr. Um, I see decent pre-emergence activity. I don't see as good a pre-emergence activity on cockleburr from Sandia as I do post-emergence, if I remember my data right. Years ago, I remember, I think, we saw a little bit better activity on cuckleburr, maybe post-emergence, whereas pigweed was better pre-emergence. So if you have the cuckleburr, I would definitely lean towards the dual command and reflex as giving you control. Um, again, I'm not bashing the four-way. I'm just thinking you're gonna get a little bit better cuckleburr activity. Keep your command rate up as high as you can get it. And keep it, uh, dual's not gonna give you a whole lot on cuckleburr because again, it's a pretty large seated um, broadleaf weed and then the, the reflex should help you tremendously. There was a question here about <clears throat> um, the um, question was on dual over the top of the row. Um, we've been, I, I've known growers that's probably been doing dual over the top of the row now for somewhere between 20 to 25 years. Uh, we see very little trouble. Now I'm not saying you can't see some now and then. When I see the worst problem with using dual directly over the row is when people put the herbicide out first and then plant through it. That's where I always see the most uh, bigger reduction. If you put it out, you know, plant and then spray over the top, we rarely see any stunning from it. Now, I'm not saying you won't see just a little bit of growth reduction, but again, it's one of those things, which, which is more important, you know, a little bit of, of bigger reduction or losing the crop to weeds. <laughs> so <clears throat> again, we see very little issue putting it out over the top if you put it out pre-emergence, that is plant the crop and then spray it over the top. Where we have the worst problems is like I said, when I see somebody who says dual caused a lot of injury, it's when they sprayed first and then planted through that. And what happens is when you plant, you're actually getting some of that chemical down in there around the seed and causing a little bit of injury. Any other questions? Oh, I, one other thing I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> well, if we got a minute, is the um, bull nettle and, and horse nettle. That's a, it's a perennial nightshade and wherever we do vegetables, we find that we're really selecting for those weeds because, you know, a lot of our herbicides are safe in nightshades. We have the same thing in tomatoes. You know, I'm using Syncor and Dual I'm using Syncor Dual and Reflex. And with it being a perennial nightshade, we're just not getting control of it. Like I said earlier, you will see a little bit of suppression or burn if you use Sandia over the top of um, the, um, excuse me, the small, um, um, small bull nettle or horse nettle. Really what I'm recommending is that if you have bull nettle and horse nettle in a field, Probably our best treatment option is going to be to go in there in the fall when harvest is done and before you get a just a really killing frost that's going to make everything dead um, is to go in there with either 2,4-D or Banville and try to treat that and get that killed out. Uh, you know, if you're going to sow a cover crop, you're probably going to lean towards using 2,4-D. Um, if you're not going to have a cover crop or maybe you get your cover crop established, and then you do it, um, you just have to be careful with your Banville rate when you start using Banville um, over a small emerged grass or cover crop. 
But I really think fall application of a phenoxy herbicide is our best option on that. I wish I had better options. You know, I mean, if you could do some post-directed glyphosate, it's going to help some, but it's going to be better to try to do some um, something like the 2,4-D. Any other questions? Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Ashley. And thank, thank you, you. All for participating. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, it's a real good crowd tonight. And um, I do, before we go, I want to remind you about next Tuesday's meeting. Um, it's going to be on ag labor with some updates um, from the Virginia Ag Growers Association on uh, H2A program stuff. So um, if that is of interest to you or uh, applies to you, um, be sure that you join in and listen to that. So um, I'll get this posted on YouTube um, for those who couldn't make it tonight or if you wanted to go back and uh, revisit any of the stuff that was discussed. So thank you, Alan, for your time tonight. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.